half. Last week, it was announced that migrants crossing the English Channel from Calais and everywhere else, but mostly from Calais, would be sent to Africa for our Commonwealth cousins in Rwanda to process their claims. We're not the first of Her Majesty's dominions to ship would-be migrants to remoter parts of the Commonwealth. Australia deals with its own illegal incomers by sending them a couple of thousand miles away to Nauru, which is basically a small rock of bird droppings. Uh, Nothing against that. The phosphate business was very lucrative for them until the bottom dropped out and the government of Nauru was forced into alternative economic strategies, such as investing in a terrible West End musical about Leonardo, which flopped spectacularly. My next guest, Elaa Zivada, also loves the theatre. She's an Iranian artist and filmmaker who was detained in Nauru from 2013 to 2019, and her photography helped expose the conditions in that detention center. She's now made a film about it, searching for um, Arama Sayesh Gar. Elaj, but just before we get to Nauru, uh, you decided you needed to get out of Iran, which is entirely reasonable. I don't think many of the people watching this would want to find themselves living in Iran. Why did you pick Australia? Well, hello, Mark. Happy Easter to you and your viewer. Mm. First of all, I really Mm. appreciate that you are trying to cover the issue from different angles. Well, at the time, I didn't Mm. have enough time to think where I'm going to. It was just the first solution, the first way that I could find. So I didn't have any plan to how to uh, seek asylum from a country. So at the time, I was vulnerable with no solution. It was just the first thing that I could do without any planning. So that's what led me to being exiled and uh, imprisoned for six years in the Pacific island Mm. of Nauru. I sought asylum from Australia, actually, because I saw democracy exist. I thought democracy exists in Australia, but I was wrong. It wasn't. It wasn't. 